Hello, welcome to Law Excellence. Recently, we are seeing this term in news called Spring Equinox and this term is related to a concept called revolution of Earth around Sun. This term Spring Equinox denotes spring means a particular season which is starting in Northern Hemisphere called Spring Season and this term Equinox is associated with equal length of day and night all across the globe. March 20th, 2025 is considered as Spring Equinox Day and associated with this bigger concept is revolution of Earth around Sun. So we have seen all basic facts related to revolution of earth around sun. Next we will go to the important topic related to that elliptical orbit of earth around sun and its concept called perihelion and aphelion position. So we have already seen earth is revolving around sun from west to east direction or counterclockwise direction. Shape of the orbit is elliptical in shape and this elliptical shape at one day in a year. So we have seen time 365.25 days is the average revolutionary time of earth around sun. In all of these days, there will be one day in a year where Earth's position will be farthest from the Sun. There will be another day in a year where Earth's position will be very nearest to the Sun. That position where Earth is positioned far away from Sun, we call this as aphelion position. Position very near to the surface of Sun, we call it perihelion position. And we have studied that concept astronomical unit, average distance between Earth and Sun considered as 150 million kilometers. And when earth is in aphelion position, average distance between earth and sun is 152 million kilometers. And when earth is near to the sun, average distance is 147 million kilometers. Generally, aphelion position comes in summer during July 4th and perihelion position comes during winter on Jan 3rd. And this is very important concept. So we generally feel that if it is a summer, temperature is high. Because temperature is high, we feel that sun is or earth is located near to the sun. But this is not true. Perihelion position comes during winter on Jan 3rd. And during this winter, it ensures that earth is not freezing. And this position, aphelion position comes during summer when earth is positioning itself far away from sun. Relatively, intensity of sunlight will be moderate and earth doesn't burn up and this is very important concept during summer it is aphelion during winter it is perihelion now we are discussing important seasons which are formed because of revolution of earth around sun okay so this is how earth is revolving around the sun in an elliptical orbit so we have very important latitudes which are there around earth 0 degrees 23 and half degrees 66 and half degree 90 degree north same in southern hemisphere we call them respectively equator cancer arctic circle north pole capricorn antarctic circle and south pole and these important latitudes play a very critical role in revolution of earth around the sun so earth is revolving around the sun and because of this revolution, at one point in a day, Earth rays will, sorry, Sun rays will fall directly or vertically on equator. At another point in a day, Sun rays will fall vertically over Tropic of Cancer. At other point in a day, Sun rays will fall vertically on equator again. At another point of day, Sun rays will fall vertically over Tropic of Capricorn on one day. The day on which sun rays are falling vertically on equator, both of these days will be called equinox days. And on these days, the length of day and night will be equal. So we have earth, we have sun and exactly half of the earth will receive exactly equal amount of sunlight all throughout its surface. We will experience 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of night. So these days are called equinox days. In these equinox days, we have two different equinox days. First is called vernal or spring equinox. Second is called autumn or fall equinox. So vernal equinox falls in the month of March between March 19th and 21st. This year it has fallen on March 20th. Then have we have this autumn or fall equinox. It falls on between September 21st to 24th. Mostly it falls on September 23rd. So these are two important days. Then we have two more important days called solstice days. So we have two days, solstice, summer solstice days, winter solstice days. On these solstice days, length of day and night will vary. On a summer solstice, length of day will be maximum, length of night will be very short. 
ड्यूरिंग विंटर सॉलिस्टिस लेंथ ऑफ डे विल बी मिनिमम लेंथ ऑफ नाइट विल बी वेरी लॉन्ग सो समर सॉलिस्टिस फॉल्स ऑन अ डे बिटवीन जून ट्वेंटी एथ एंड जून ट्वेंटी सेकेंड मोस्टली इट विल फॉल ऑन जून ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट and this is a reason why we are celebrating international yoga day on june 21st because we are getting maximum day of sunlight more than 12 hours 14 to 15 hours of sunlight we will get then this winter solstice is there generally it falls between december 20 and december 23rd mostly it falls on december 22nd and all these are important days so starting from spring equinox day march 20 or 21st up to june june 20 21 the season will be called spring season starting from june 21 up to september 22nd 23rd this season will be called summer season from september 22nd to december 22nd this season will be called fall or autumn season in this season this term fall is important here fall season means not shedding of leaves this fall is associated with fall in temperature from summer we are transitioning to winter temperature falls that is why this is called fall season finally between december 22nd and march 2021st we have our winter season so revolution of earth is associated with seasons we have four important seasons forming because of revolution of earth and in these revolutions so we need to know some important points so during the summer season and all of these seasons whenever we speak of we speak of only with respect to northern hemisphere if i say it is summer season it is only summer season in northern hemisphere winter winter in northern hemisphere so we are talking of summer season we will see how conditions will be there in this summer season during summer season sun rays will fall vertically on tropic of cancer so first important point on summer season second important point with respect to summer season is all places beyond 66.5 degrees north will be under complete sunlight for 24 hours so they will receive 24 hours of sunlight all places between arctic circle and north pole second important point exactly opposite conditions will be there in southern hemisphere in southern hemisphere beyond 66 and of degree south to 90 degree south all these places will not experience the sunlight they will be under complete darkness for 24 hours so this is our summer season so if i say summer season conditions will be there in northern hemisphere exactly opposite conditions will be there in southern hemisphere then we have this winter season during winter season sun rays will fall vertically on tropic of capricorn and all places beyond 66 and of degree south to 90 degree south will be under complete sunlight for 24 hours and exactly opposite conditions will prevail in northern hemisphere all places beyond arctic circle up to north pole will be under complete darkness for 24 hours and the complete darkness lo unnaru sun rays is falling in southern hemisphere not in northern hemisphere that is why northern hemisphere will be cool we are calling it as winter season and this term spring equinox is also important spring equinox marks a transition from winter season towards spring season and this marks the beginning of spring season in northern hemisphere similarly autumn season or fall equinox season we have during autumn season it marks a transition from summer to this autumn season and during this we are finding fall in temperature Okay, so all these are important concepts related to seasons and all terms related to seasons. Now we will see the concept called apparent movement of sun because of revolution. So we have seen when we studied about the seasons that the sun rays are falling. So at one point in a day, sun rays is falling vertically over equator on March. Sun rays is falling vertically over tropic of Cancer on June. again in september sun rays is falling on equator in december sun rays are falling on tropic of capricorn so on june 21st sun position is there on tropic of cancer july august september sun will travel from tropic of cancer towards equator on september 22nd sun's position will be there on equator again we have 
from September, October, November, December. Sun will travel from equator towards the southern hemisphere. Finally, December 22nd, sun will reach southern part, tropic of Capricorn. So, this is the northernmost point traveled by sun. This is the southernmost point traveled by sun. And that path of sun from north to south is part of apparent movement of sun. This path is called Dakshinayan path, southward journey. Then exactly opposite happens between December and June. On a December, sun rays is falling vertically on Tropic of Capricorn. Jan, Feb, March. By March, sun rays will fall back again on equator. April, May, June. By June, sun rays is falling back on Tropic of Cancer. So between December and June, sun is trying to move from Tropic of Capricorn through equator towards Tropic of Cancer. This we call it Uttarayan path, northward journey of sun. And all these marks important days. So June, we are calling it as summer solstice. September, we are calling it as autumn equinox. December, we are calling it as winter solstice. March, we are calling it as spring equinox. Again, June, summer solstice. So March 20th recently is considered as spring equinox day. So related to revolution of earth and these equinox and solstice days, this is apparent movement of sun. This word apparent, Apparent means relative movement of sun. So we have already seen as per heliocentric theory, sun is not moving. Position of sun is fixed in solar system. Earth is revolving around the sun. But we feel that the sun is moving with respect to position of earth. That is why we are using this term apparent movement of sun. So related to revolution, apparent movement, Dakshinayan and Uttarayan, these terms are important. Okay. So, this is about the spring equinox, this is about revolution of earth around sun and all the concepts associated with revolution of earth around sun. I hope you understood all of these concepts. If you have any doubts, you can drop a message in comment box. I will be addressing your queries. Thank you.